I told you that our history is linked with uh, Napoleon, but our history also is important here in London, because in 1909, uh, Courvoisier was uh, sold to an English family, the Simon family, uh, the best friends of the Courvoisier family. Uh, Courvoisier family didn't have any sons and daughters. They had only nephews, and that's why you can see on this uh, label, uh, Courvoisier and Curlier. Mm -hmm. Curlier were the nephews of uh, Courvoisier, Miss Courvoisier, married with Mr. Curlier. Uh, this family never had also succession. And uh, as they uh, had uh, the distributor here in London, uh, they decided to sell their company in 1909 to uh, the Simon family. And the Simon family uh, was in charge to sell Courvoisier in UK from the beginning of the uh, 19th century. Mm -hmm. So that's why you can find here in UK, and especially in London, very old bottle of Courvoisier. Uh, we have old bottles in, in our own cellar uh, mm -hmm. in Jarnac, but the old bottles we have, generally speaking, are ingredients to prepare a blend. And for me, it was the first time I saw a 1789 vintage uh, in a Corrosian Curlier bottle uh, here in London. And that's nice to, uh, to, to see this bottle. And you can see on the label also that uh, it, it is written all cognac. Mm -hmm. And why all cognac? Because Corrosian Curlier. Uh, established their headquarters in Jarnac in the uh, 1840s. And the name of Courvoisier of C and Curlier appeared on, on labels uh, in 1840s, 1850s. Mm -hmm. So the cognac inside the bottle from 1789, that means that this cognac was aged a long period of time in barrel before to be bottled. So wow. uh, in the bottle, you have normally a cognac about 50 years mm -hmm. of aging, uh, 50 to 60 years of aging inside mm -hmm. the bottle. So it's a piece of history. Uh, you can see also the bottle itself. Uh, the bottle was not produced by the industry of glass because it was not existing at this period of time. And you can see the light it reflection. The light uh, uh, and you can see that it's a very craftsman mm. bottle too. Absolutely. And the level of liquid inside it, uh, of course, you are not at the top of the bottle. Uh, that means that you had evaporation, mm -hmm. but not too much because, you know, uh, that means that this bottle was uh, conserved in a very good way. Uh, because uh, if you don't take care of the cork, for instance, or if you don't take care of the exposition to, uh, to light or to temperature, uh, temperature mm -hmm. you can have uh, much more evaporation. So in that case, that means that the guy, the person in charge to, to, uh, of this bottle, take care of this bottle. And, uh, uh, this bottle arrived today here in Harrods in a very good condition and it is in a special cabinet oh, with yes. air, air control <laughs> and temperature control, humidity control, so uh, that's nice to see it in a so, so beautiful position. Wonderful. And so for some people who ask the question sometimes, you know, they find an old bottle in a cellar. Um, I come across lots of people who ask that question and, and ask if you can keep the cognac once it's been bottled, um, if, if the blend itself or what's inside will move within time. If it's kept in the right conditions, you are saying that that shouldn't move too much. Yes, if it's kept in good condition, uh, you can have a very gorgeous cognac it's inside. Uh, in our own parody in Corvoisier, uh, we have very old cognac from the 19th century. Uh, time to time, our testing committee controls the quality and we have gorgeous quality for instance from 1865, which is a very old cognac, but kept in a very good condition. It is always very good. And depending on the harvest, uh, depending on the maturation process this, bot this cognac followed, we can think it could be very good today. So uh, what I would recommend, uh, I would recommend, it. no, <laughs> but maybe, you know, to, to, to continue to keep this bottle in mm -hmm. a good way, uh, maybe the owner will have to change the cork, again. maybe again. In, in Courvoisier, we try, fun, yes, uh, we, we try to change the corks every 30 years okay. in order not to have any problem with mm -hmm. too much evaporation, which can, uh, um, yes, not destroy, but which can, uh, which can affect the quality of the product. Okay. So if you, when uh, the next owner, because I think this bottle will be sold at uh, 95,000 pounds, that's the price. Yes, yes that is the price at Harrods, yes. Okay. Uh, unique, bottle, though, unique, bottle. A unique bottle. Uh, so maybe the next owner will change the cork 
so when you will change the cork, I recommend to sip a small quantity just to, to have a, just to, uh, to control, the, to discover, <laughs> and to have the pleasure. If, I, if he has purchased this bottle, to have the pleasure to test it a little bit, to have a flavor of what was cognac at the 18th century. Oh, and the other piece of collection of this cognac is uh, the cognac was made with another grape that, than we have today. Uh, we have Uni Blanc today to produce cognac as a grape. At this period of time, it was uh, Folle Blanche. It was uh, Prefluxera. And uh, Phylloxera was a disease which destroyed a uh, great part of the cognac uh, vineyards. We had to replant uh, the vineyard with another variety, uh, Uni Blanc. We have time to time some, some vineyards with Folle Blanche, but in very, very small quantity. And that's true, but it's not so common to have uh, uh, cognac coming from this period of time and with the original flavor of cognac from the 18th century.